Hello guys, Mike here over at Aroy Clips Productions. Um, just doing a very quick video for you guys today, basically talking about uh, templates in Logic and how we can show and hide tracks that are being used and not used. Um, this video is kind of a just a response to some of the comments I've seen floating around Facebook and in the forums, kind of for or against using a template. Um, I personally do use a template, as you can see here. This is my current template that I'm that I'm working to. It's not that big. We took 264 tracks. Some people are, have got crazy templates compared to this, but this is what I work to. I like to kind of get into a session and have my go-to instruments kind of loaded or instruments that match that particular project at the time. So I don't have to keep loading everything and then I can just tweak things as I go or replace patches um, as I see fit uh, for the score, essentially. So one thing that's a little irritating with this, and this is kind of one of the points that people were arguing were, were they were against the templates for, if you're down here, you know, um, programming some synth or doing some percussion, you want to check your rhythms against like a, a violin track or a string track you've got going on. Perhaps you've got some staccato notes, you want to just make sure that they're matching up correctly. Well, you've got to keep scrolling up and down the template to get all the way back up to your, your string, and you've got to scroll back down to get to your brass. And that's a little bit annoying and sort of time consuming. Um, so I found a way you can basically hide all the tracks that you're not using. So if I hit a key here, that has now minimized everything that's not being used, showing me only what's actually, you know, uh, in use within this session, which makes life a lot easier for me um, in terms of, you know, now I can just see, well, there's a string line there. And, you know, we've got some padroni stuff here. You can double click them and bring them up straight away and start affecting and changing your MIDI. Then if I want to go and load something else, I just hit a key command again, and that's now brought my entire template back up again, ready for me to jump and choose a different sound or affect something in the template. So for me, that's really useful. You know, most of the times, once I've defined my my kind of core sound or the sounds that I'm going to use, I've got my template kind of together in terms of my, my audible palette. I'll hit my key and then work in this view uh, using only what, what I've actually selected. So the key thing is how do you actually do this? So what we need to do is go up to the top next to the Apple logo, click Logic Pro X, and we need to go to Key Commands and then Edit. This kind of brings up this window. So um, I'm going to clear what I've put in there. This is what it's going to look like when you first open it. So you can see there's a whole bunch of key commands you can actually set. Um, I'd recommend looking through this menu, to be honest, to find... You know, you might want to set something that you, you know, change in your fade tool instead of maybe going in and clicking about up here, mucking about, you can actually choose a key command. But anyway, if you search at the top here, we're going to search for hide tracks. Then it's this one that you want. So um, under main window tracks, you've got unhide all tracks and hide all empty tracks. Me personally, I've set it to, you know, just under your F16 key on the numerical side of your keyboard, you've got this kind of like box with an X through it, which I have no idea what that is. I have never used it in my life um, other than for this purpose. So for me, my hide all tracks um, is just that key on its own and unhide has got a shift involved as well. Um, so, you know, it's so simple just to jump in Logic Pro X, key commands, edit, you know, search for hide tracks main window tracks and then set your your kind of shortcuts and then you can just jump between shown and unshown this goes as well for your mixer so if i bring up my mixer here this is showing me currently every single track um, that i've got kind of loaded which is again a little bit of a nightmare if you're adjusting your brass here and you've got to go all the way back and find your brass you know so if i if i choose to um, hide the tracks again and then we bring up the mixer again takes a little while to adjust itself, but it will basically, you know, minimize itself down to show me just what I'm working to. Um, and it's in real time. So, you know, this is everything that's in the track. If I move this playhead along, we can see that the, the modulations um, change um, and the, the, the expression and the levels and whatever else I've got going on at that particular time um, for the, you know, for what I'm actually programming. So yeah, the majority of the time I'm in this view, um, because, you know, I don't really care about seeing things that I'm not loading, but, you know, hit of a key and uh, we're straight back to seeing everything. So I hope that video was useful, guys. Um, please uh, rate, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, continue the conversation. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. OK, guys, take care. Bye bye.